Arjun having the concept that he had to take karma sannyas, go live in a cave. Uh, and Prabhupada made reference to uh, the time when he was bringing the message that young people, the hippies, the one good quality they had was renunciation. So generally in this time, uh, these days, that's not such a common quality. Uh, renunciation. People aren't renouncing as much. They're more, seems more uh, uh, attracted to especially technology and so many things. Uh, and then you were also making the point that, you know, we don't have to give up anything. But it seems there needs to be some... We may have to give up bad habits, but it's not we have to give up things. Mm -hmm. We don't have to give up worldly possessions and become in that way renounced. Rather, we have to utilize what the gifts that God has given us in service to God, rather than deploying them in sense gratification. Mm -hmm. And we may have to give up things in terms of bad habits or bad character, but not things, necessarily. So, but is that, is that address your question? Yes. Really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just editing your question. <laughs> okay. Since there's not a lot of hands up, I'll uh, share it this way. One of the things that happens at our temples, it's very nice from time to time. There are professors high school or college professors that have a world religion class or philosophy class or a Hinduism class or whatever it is class. Um, and they bring their students to the temple and they have them observe what they call our rituals, arti. And then they have a, you know, an introductory class and then they ask questions. So, Here's some of the common questions that kids ask. This is, you know, from grade school, high school, college. Is there meaning to the color that you're wearing? Why do you shave your head? What's that stuff on your forehead? Um, what's the role of women? And then another one is this one. To become a member of this religion, you have to renounce all your worldly possessions. That phrase, renounce all your worldly possessions, is an American phrase, at least you know, Western phrase, maybe specific to America. That has to do with monastic life. About monks take a vow of poverty, they renounce their worldly possessions. So do you have to be a monk? They just say it in a different way. You have to renounce all your worldly possessions. So the answer I'd like to give them is no. You don't have to renounce all your worldly possessions, but you have to renounce the misconception that you have worldly possessions to renounce. <laughs> and they do just what you just did. And then I explain that actually, the reality is, everything belongs to God. We enter this world owning nothing, we leave this world owning nothing, and in between we're very busy trying to make things ours, that, that we, we leave behind. So rather than trying to make things yours, recognize who it belongs to. And utilize it in service to God. For those of you that are from India, you're familiar with the Upanishads. And one of those Upanishads has been translated, and maybe translation over here, Isha Upanishad. And the first mantra of Isha Upanishad says what I just said. Which means, Isha means the controller. Isa Vasya, God centered spirit, is to recognize that God is providing necessities for all, and we're part of all, and we should recognize. That something is meant for my maintenance, my necessities. <coughs> As pro 
Pulpit like to say the elephant eats so many kilos and the ant eats one small grain. As the elephant is provided, the ant is provided, we're also provided. We, in the human species, should recognize who is the controller, Isha. He's providing our maintenance and we treat it that way. God is providing. We're being maintained. We're discussing this on the way down in the car. It's God who's maintaining me. I'm working, but supposing my ability to work stopped, or supposing whatever happened to stopped happening, I, I, I'm not able to maintain myself. I'm dependent upon God maintaining me. It's not my work that's... <coughs> fruitive consciousness is, I'm maintaining myself. And spiritual consciousness is, I'm working for God and He's maintaining me. And that's the reality. That's the issue of Padishad. And we don't take other things knowing well to whom they belong. They belong to God. Just, not just it just belongs to my neighbor, but it belongs to God. And what I have also belongs to God. And that's, that's the spirit of detached work. I'm working for God. And He's maintaining me. It's one of the one of the symptoms of surrender from Padma Purana. There's six angas or, or, or parts of surrender, and one of them is um, uh, Goptritve. The Supreme Lord is is my maintainer. I I don't become lazy, complacent inactive, go ahead, God, maintain me, because <laughs> you're, you're my maintainer. <laughs> One works very vigorously in God's service, but it's not my service that's maintaining me. It's God who's maintaining me. And that's true for a sannyasi, and it's true for a grahasta, and it's true for a vadaprasta, and it's true for a child, and it's now my mother and father are maintaining me, ultimately. Yes, they're placing the food in my mouth, and my father is working hard and earning some money and that buys the food. But ultimately it's God who's maintaining me. And, and religious life is like that. I'm working under the codes of God, and He's maintaining me. And so that my consciousness should be God consciousness, not the secular thing. I work, and separately I worship. Something else? I had a question.